Cheers, to a successful yeah. 2023. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. I'll talk about whatever. My life's all kinds of crazy. Hit <laughs> the bell. Does he have an answer? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just, so- just subscribe already. Well, Dave, welcome to the podcast. I really appreciate you coming out. Trevor, thank you for getting this hooked up. Yeah, yeah. So anyone that's listening to the podcast today, we have, is it, is your last name Dorlaxon? Mm-hmm. Yes. So we got Dave Dorlaxon on the podcast, but Trevor Dorlaxon, we've been friends now for, I mean, a couple of years, probably you've been basically since I opened my gym, yep. you've been coming. Um, and you just suggested to me, cause you, you're also a part of Barely Covered. Yep. yep. A big part of your life is music. And you're like, Hey, you should have my dad on. I think it would be a really interesting story. Your, your son really... Uh, seems to look up to you and think you have a very interesting life. Thank you. And so what I've gathered is that you are a musician, right. guitarist mainly, right? Um, that's like been your big focus in life, right? It has been for many, many years, yes. Um, are you okay with telling the story of how it all started? Because Trevor also said that you didn't start out. Did you work a normal job at one point in your life at a young age? Absolutely. Absolutely. And then at some point you decided, hey, this isn't for me. Guitar was just a hobby. Yeah. Yeah. Guitar was a hobby. So what did you do before you were playing? Like he did a ton. Well, okay. Let's, let's talk about this. What age did you get in the guitar or what got you in the guitar? Like what got you playing music? Well, um, and do you remember kind of what time in your life it was? Roughly. Yeah. Um, when I first noticed how much fun a guitar could be, I was a kid at church camp. Okay. And there was another kid there, and he was playing guitar. Uh, there was probably a counselor playing along with him, you know, a couple of them. And they were just doing fun campfire songs. But he had the biggest smile on his face. He just looked like he was having a blast. Mm-hmm. And then when the week was over and everybody was packed up to leave, I was walking uh, over to a building, and I saw his stuff laying out on the ground, and his guitar was out there, no case. And I ran my finger across the strings, and it sounded so awesome. It was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And there was something about that. Do you know what, like, era this was? Was this 60s? Yeah. Somewhere in the 60s. Yeah. And are you in, like, grade school at this point? That was probably, yeah, grade school. Had to be grade school, yeah, because, yeah. Then a friend of mine, and I, I... didn't think too much more about it after that. You know, I mean, it, it impressed me how, how cool I thought that instrument sounded. It was mm-hmm. probably a cheap guitar, but it sounded really neat. Sure. But then a friend of mine said, hey, Dave, hey, my folks got me a guitar. You should ask your folks to get you one, you know, and just on that. That alone and your interest on from camp already. I, you had it. I'd already gotten, yeah, a little taste of it. Yeah. Now, were you listening to like any music at this point in your life? Like any, any, was it rock and roll a big one of your genres or what? You know, actually, that was something else that was a little bit eye opening. Um, Grade school, and this was early grade school, for a few days, for a week or so, the most popular girl in school was the one that knew the words to Hound Dog from Elvis Presley. Okay. And we chased her around the the playground asking her to sing the song again. Mm hmm. And, you know, it was kind of like, wow, she had instant popularity and fame. Because, Just because she knew the song. Because she knew the song, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that was kind of eye-opening. Um, but as far as what we were listening to, I don't know, whatever was on the radio or on TV. Sure, but you were listening to rock music at that time? No, not a lot of rock. Like Elvis? Well, you know what? We were aware of Elvis. We knew he was a big deal. Mm-hmm. Okay. The Beatles hadn't hit yet. Okay. Yeah. Because <laughs> back in the day, Elvis was kind of like a lot of a lot of parents didn't like Elvis, right? Oh yeah, you he were... was radical and and a rebel. Yeah. Yeah. With, with his hair and the way he dressed and the way he moved, you know, I mean, they filmed him from the waist up because they didn't want want you to see his hips gyrating. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and my grandpa was, you know, his dad was a Baptist pastor, so okay. like old school Baptist. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure that and. Oh, he wasn't into that stuff yeah. at all. <laughs> right, because that's what you always hear about, like the like spe- especially um, parents that are in the church. 
they didn't want their kids being raised listening to Elvis that because stuff, of the uh, negative influence yeah, at that time. He's the guy leading the church. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That, that stuff was rebellion, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but it was exciting to us when we were kids because mm-hmm. it was different. Yeah. And uh, it was real exciting. And uh, so I did ask for a guitar, and they got me one. It started with my granddad's hand-me-down, which uh, was extremely warped and hard to play. Mm-hmm. But it got me started. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like that's how a lot of people start out. Oh, yeah. That, that was my first guitar as well. Yeah. Was my, my dad had one that he handed and out. You know, I tell parents, you know, if they're interested in starting a kid in guitar, you know, don't spend a whole lot of money just right away. Mm-hmm. Let's see if they take to it first. Yeah. Yeah. See if they actually like it or if they just think yeah, they like if, it. it. Right. Yeah. If they take to it, uh, then it's worth the investment. But, you know, if it's just a here today, gone tomorrow, you know, don't blow a lot of money. Yeah. You're saying take to it as they're in their room playing, putting some effort in themselves. Yeah, and they're they're yeah they're progressing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. Some kids want to learn to play, and some kids want to just say they're taking lessons. You know, absolutely. And so yeah, you want to kind of see where they're headed. You know, and nowadays it's a lot easier too. Oh, there's so much information out there. Because you can get on YouTube yeah. now and just there's learn how to play any song you so want. So much. Yeah. Learn the chords, everything yeah. like that. Yeah, there's so much information out there. When I was growing up, it wasn't like that. Like there was people were just getting into like the. Uh, What's it where people can just look up like the, it's like a cheat sheet. The like tablature. Chords, yeah. Chords, the like tabs. The tabs. Yeah. yeah. I remember like tabs was a big thing and people would learn yeah. songs that way. And yeah. But my parents were very against that at the time. We, I didn't have internet, but my friends had internet. So uh, yeah. I could get tabs from them that yeah. they had, but they had to give it to me. But my parents wanted yeah. me to go take lessons. So it was like, right. They, they were, once I started taking the lessons, I realized like that was a better way to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and yeah, you can learn, you know, I mean, there are a lot of people that are self-taught. There are a lot of people that just learn from friends. Uh, you know, you can learn if you do it enough, you'll get good at it. Mm-hmm. But since I've been doing it for so long, I firmly believe that a fundamental, uh, structured course of study, and this goes back to my school teaching days too, you know, uh, that's really the way to go because there are fundamentals and techniques that you need to develop you can't just pick up a guitar and play it absolutely it's not as easy as it looks sure it's relatively easy uh i mean i've got a guy right now that's a uh airplane pilot he said learning to fly an airplane was easier than this (laughs) yeah i I could see that they they actually say flying an airplane is pretty easy I don't know. But once you get it up, and I've never flown an airplane either. I don't but know. <laughs> they say once you get up there, it's just autopilot for the most part. I guess. Yeah, I guess. I, um, I don't know guitar, like learning to play a guitar is not an easy thing. Well, it takes time. Mm-hmm. And yeah, if you put the time into it, you're going to get somewhere with it. And it's like getting your like fingers to be able to stretch it, yes, the right way. Exactly. And calloused up too. Yep. They've got to toughen up. They've got to limber up and they've got to learn to work independently. We're not used to that. We're used to grabbing something like a baseball bat, and they all grab together, mm-hmm. you know. And the the only thing I can relate it to that people would understand is keyboarding, you know, like on your computer or something. Because there you're working your fingers individually, and that's tough too. If you ever tried, I mean, like video gaming now is really popular, and people to be able to stretch out their fingers and move them all over the place really fast, quick, yeah. And then they're using a mouse over here, yeah. It's it's not as easy. As there's one skills. would think. Yeah, there's skills. Yes. And you need to develop your skills. So I actually, I'll, I'll do that with, with my guitar program. I'll start them through a series of books. And if they, if they stick with it and they get through the series of books, then they have developed enough skills. We can start learning their songs that they wanted to learn to begin with. Sure. You know? And if they lasted that long, then they've earned the right to learn their songs. <laughs> yeah, because the lessons aren't the fun part. It's no, the songs that you love. No, no I tell them. Play. I tell them early on, you know, after the new wears off in a couple of weeks, it's going to seem like homework, mm-hmm. you know, seriously. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, that's when you really need to, you know, make a commitment. Yeah. Yeah. I think I agree with you that to have some type of fundamentals to be able to actually be teached at the, at the I think, all the way through. Because if you are doing something wrong and you don't realize you're doing it wrong, you're just going to keep repeating it. Yeah. And so that's what, like any more. That's why I would, I always try to do. That's why I le- learn or lean to, towards books a lot of times, mm-hmm. or try to find somebody that really knows what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, because like I'll sit there and I'll just repeat 
the process yeah. in an incorrect way, and I don't even realize what I'm doing is wrong. And it, I, it's like I spend three times as long trying to learn it because I'm just repeating the bad process. Yeah, and then it's harder to break. Yeah, bad habits. It's harder to break. Yeah, it's a yeah. lot harder to break. It, it becomes a habit, and it's hard to undo. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I'm trying to learn how to golf right now. <laughs> and it's uh i learned that it's not as easy as it looks i gave up on that i sliced every golf ball i had off to <laughs> way off to the right and uh into a dandelion field yeah and i'm going there's no way i'm gonna go out there and try to find my golf balls yeah. so i just quit <laughs> i think i i think i went this i've played on friday i went through about nine balls yeah <laughs> trying to learn how to just just yeah. try to hit them and that's i think i need to spend more time at a driving range but if i was saying i'm like and i need to find somebody that knows what they're doing take some lessons and just get a little better on it. Everything, even golf, everything. Golf is not an easy sport. There are mm -hmm. skills involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, there's skills involved in guitar. Uh, but it would have been the summer of 65 that I started taking okay. guitar lessons. And uh, So did you start like immediately after you got your guitar? Right away, yeah. Mr. Lee. I don't know his first name. Mr. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Up in Florissant where I grew up. Oh, wow. Okay. Yep. And I took lessons with him, I don't know, for a year and a half, couple of years. Uh, should have stuck with it, but I didn't know better at the time. Uh, but You're also a young kid, though. Well, I was young, and I didn't know uh, that I would benefit from sticking with it. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to play rock and roll. And he wasn't showing me rock and roll. Uh, so I just kind of left lessons and started trying to figure stuff out on my own. Sure. Which is not an easy thing. Do you find your friends? Hopefully somebody knows something can show you, you know, mm -hmm. you share ideas and stuff. Um, and you know, stuck with it, but you know, we're talking about all the materials and, uh, everything that's available nowadays. And we didn't have much of anything. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, I kind of chuckle the way we had to figure out a song. If, you could find, sometimes you could find a, a song book uh, that might have one of the songs you want to play, but they were always arranged for piano. They were always in the wrong key because they were arranged for piano. And they'd have melody and chords, but you couldn't play with the record because it didn't match up. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, still didn't have the skills to transpose. Uh, we would have to take a, a vinyl album and put it on the record player and drop the needle down and on the song and try to pick out the notes as it played then pick the needle up move it back try to pick out the notes as it played pick the needle up pull it back and that's how we figured out songs that seems like such a tough way to do it yeah because i've tried doing that just on youtube where you can just click right where you need to go mm -hmm. and i don't have i go and look up the tab yeah <laughs> yeah yeah I'm you like, have to it's <laughs> patience yeah i bet it taught you some patience well, for sure I, it probably did, and it wasn't like we had any other options except for somebody to teach us. You know? Right. Um, so it was a, a, a slow process. Uh, but, you know, I mean, everybody did that. I read an, uh, an interview with Eddie Van Halen, and he learned to play Cream's Crossroads by doing that. Whoa. Yeah. But he did something, and I always knew about it, but I never wanted to do it. Uh, on a record player, if you're familiar with the record players, they've got different speeds on them. They got, I don't know what the slowest one is, but then uh, 33 is where you'd put an album, 45 is where you'd put the little 45s. We call them 45s. Uh, well, if you slow the speed down, you cut the speed in half every time you notch it down. Mm -hmm. Or if you speed it up, you, you double it. So you could slow it down and pick out each individual note much easier, but it was all an octave lower. Sure. And that drove me nuts. <laughs> so I never did it that way. I probably slowed down. Well, you got to have down. really good ears, too. You know, I think it, it probably really did pay off in that regard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I, you know, I don't have perfect picture or any of that kind of stuff, but I still, to this day, uh, for the most part, I'll just play along with a song. If I need to learn a new song for the band or something, I'll just play along with it and pick it out as it goes mm -hmm. uh, rather than look it up. Now, sometimes there are some, uh, oh, one of Trevor's favorite bands, the Foo Fighters. Mm -hmm. Oh, I forget what the song was. Man, they had some chord shapes in there that I was not familiar with. So I, I broke down and looked it up. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Well, 
there's so much, so many different types of music out there, and everybody's trying to like have their own beat, yeah. have their own yeah. like. They have three guitar sound. players, so it's probably real yeah. muddled trying to pick out like one part. And and it was you know it was chords with extra notes thrown in you know um, mm-hmm. that were not your standard shapes, and it's like what are they doing there? Um, and then you've got m- multiple guitars recorded on top of each other and things like that, so it's hard to you know separate it all. So yeah, I found the tablature for it, and it became one of our better songs in the band for a while. Okay, yeah. So going like before we jump too far ahead, um, like when you were doing that because you were just playing as a hobby. Yeah, like when you're trying to learn these songs. Yeah, did you like? Did you keep pursuing it? Like, did you always keep playing, or was there a time in your life where you quit playing for a while? I never quit. No. Never quit. But it was always as a hobby. Uh for the longest time, yeah, and yeah, and early on, of course. I mean, you know, were you in a band early on? Very first band that counted as a band. Okay, and I couldn't even tell you the name of the band. I couldn't tell you who the guys were. <laughs> okay. I mean, this is junior high. Okay. This is ninth grade, you know. Uh, I guess it's high school. What, what, what's it considered to be part of a band? Like, what do you mean when you say, like, for it to be considered part of a band? Uh, we had three or four guys. I don't even remember how many guys we had. Three or four guys that we each played instruments. And we had two guitars and drummer. We might have had a bass player, but I can't quite remember. But... We had four songs we could play. <laughs> okay. Songs you guys made up or were these cover nope, songs? These were cover songs. Okay. And uh, our big selling point, the drummer could play Wipeout. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so we went and played at a party and we played our four songs and we said, all right, that was fun. We're out of here. And they said, no, wait, do them again. We played those four songs all night long. <laughs> Did you get paid for it? No, <laughs> but we sure did have fun. It was good practice, though. It was great. We had yeah. an audience. Yeah. Then it's like, oh, there's something to this performance thing, isn't there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You get people's attention and appreciation, you know? Yeah, and there's like some energy to it as well. Absolutely. They were having a blast. They didn't mm-hmm. care that it was just four songs. Mm-hmm. They loved it, you know? Mm-hmm. And so that was eye-opening. Um. I have no idea who those guys were. I mean, they were classmates, but that was so long ago. Uh, but, you know, little things here and there, but didn't really play professionally till I made it to college. And, you know, I was better then. I could play in better bands and bands that could get booked, you know. So did you go to college for some type of music? No, it was mm. still a hobby. Okay. I was an art major. Okay. Yeah, I have a fine arts degree. In okay. Art. Yeah. And did you do anything with it? With the art? Mm-hmm. The fine uh, art degree? Yeah, I uh, decided to be practical, and I got uh, certified in education. Okay. I have uh, certification, lifetime certification, state of Missouri. Okay. I could go back teaching if I wanted to. Sure. And you did for a while, right? I did it for 10 years. 10 years. Yeah. So that's what you did right out of college? Yeah. Yeah. And... uh I still played in bands, but, you know, teaching kind of took a lot of time. Why did you decide to teach if you liked playing the guitar so much? Um, like, if you, if you enjoyed being in a band, you are making a little money with it. Well. Why not pursue it more? Because you can have a band today and be unemployed tomorrow. Sure. Yeah. 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 You can have a band tonight and go to a gig and get fired because mm-hmm. you didn't make the owner happy. Mm-hmm. Um, there is no job security in a band, Mm -hmm. uh, at least at an early level, you know, I mean, maybe, you know, some of the big name guys, yeah, they've, they're big names. So they've got that. Sure. Okay. But if you're, you know, it's not easy to get to that level. Oh, that's a whole different ball game. You know, Mm -hmm. that's a whole different thing. Uh, playing for fun, playing for, you know, weekend gigs, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, that's hardly a career. Sure. Yeah. And Just a little extra money on the side. It is. It's extra money on the side. And did it help you get through college? Like, did any of the money, or is it just? No, it I, didn't, just I didn't play fun? enough. I didn't. I didn't gig enough to. To it was still just make that fun. Much. Yeah. It was still just fun. Okay. Yeah. So you were just when you were going to school, you were pretty well focusing on like, what am I going to do? 
career wise to support I, myself. I was, I was trying to get a degree and I was working my way through. I was going, you know, like part time college and full time job kind of a thing. So it took a while. And uh, oh, okay, so you worked yeah. through college. Yeah. Well, yeah. What were you doing then? Uh, like, as like, what was your part time job uh, or full time job? Uh, all it, it was restaurant work or construction or uh, parts delivery, driving around St. Louis, driving around St. Louis, delivering parts for a manufacturing company, sharpening yeah. knives. So, yeah. <laughs> so you did a bunch of different things. It, yeah, different things. And in, in out a painter for Six Flags was that during college? That was in in between semesters. I took semesters off sometimes, you know, to okay. to work to get some money, so I didn't have to work as much when I went back to school. I see. And uh, yeah, I slapped the first coat of paint on Six Flags when that's, I built it. That's yeah. actually kind of cool. Yeah. It, it actually was a pretty cool job for. You now, know. are you talking the walls? Like you're just painting the walls and painting the buildings, things like that? Because there's a lot there to paint. There was, and it was it was that it was buildings, but. Uh, Oh, the the only roller coaster they had at the time, the very first roller coaster they had was the Runaway Mine Train, and uh, and I was a young guy, and I guess not either not smart enough or just young enough to still be fearless. None of the other guys wanted to climb up there and uh, paint on that thing. So you're painting on the roller coaster? Yeah, on the tracks. Yeah, and uh, all they had to get up there was just like you know two by eights to. You know, tacked onto the trussles. It was like a ladder, a little handmade ladder. Yeah, it's in the seventies. With 70s. no rails. There's no safety in the seventies. <laughs> there there no safety. There was no safety in the seventies. Uh, painted every emblem on every train passenger car that they had on. on the, hand painted it on. We had to hand paint it because it was so small. Yeah, it was molded, but it was just raw metal, and we had to paint it the proper colors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think we screwed it up, and we had to repaint it. <laughs> <laughs> how do you get a job like that? You just see, uh, was it in the paper? or like Actually, that? Um, actually, it was somebody my dad knew. Okay. It had the painting company that got the contract. But is it just like, it was just a like a short-term job thing? You did that for I a bit? Six or nine months, I forget. Probably six months. Yeah, yeah. once it's done, it's done. Um, it's like well, you go that, find another job? I went back to school. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they kept building the place. Yeah. And I went back to school. Um, so that's why you work so many different jobs. You would work a job for yeah, a while. Yeah. Go to school. Yeah. Then when you're like, okay, I need to make some money. So you go find another job. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I see. And uh, I did work during during school too, but that was part of the routine. Take off, earn some money, go back to school. Mm-hmm. Um, so how long did it take you to get the uh, fine arts degree? Uh Whole whole thing, the fine arts degree, and then there was another uh, thirty hours of education class that was tacked on top of it. That was tacked on top of it, and that with doing that and working, you know, on and off and stuff like that. It was a ten year plan. Oh wow! Yeah, so I started teaching high school art when I was thirty years old. Okay. Yeah, and it was in Owensville. That oh was, wow! So yeah. how'd you end up in Owensville then? Uh, Looking job for a job. Looking for a job. Now, my folks were already here, so they said, hey, hey, the school's, school needs somebody. I don't know if you know who Edna Kitchen is, but she was the high school art teacher. Okay. She took maternity leave, and uh, then uh, the folks knew what was going on. They said, hey, you know, put in an application. And, uh, and man, I got it. Boom, just like that. I think I was the only one that applied. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, yeah, I taught in Owensville for eight years and Springfield for two. Yeah, he was the first art teacher in the new art room, the one that we had at the new high school. Oh, okay, yeah. When they yeah. built that, yeah. He that was, was, first, that he was, was a shop. It was an industrial art shop. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, and they turned it into an art room, and they built a new shop. Built that new outside building, yeah. everything yeah. like that. Yeah. That's pretty neat. So you, did, you, did, you were an art teacher the whole time? Yeah. Okay, I could see that. Yeah. It kind of falls... It kind of falls along like with the guitarists and artists. Well, it does. It, it's because yeah. guitar is an art. Yes. Music is an art. Yes. You see that a lot. I have, I have a friend, Jimmy. Well, you know Jimmy Angel. Yeah. Yep. He, he did the same thing. He got a fine arts degree. Yeah, I know Jimmy. Yeah. Oh, you know Jimmy yeah. too? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I know he got a fine arts degree. He was very big into music. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't, I think he hasn't. I think Jimmy was the first band I played with, like actually played a show for an audience. Oh, really? It was Casey and Jimmy. When cool. the mob still threw their 
music festival. It was uh-huh. the first year. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it, and he's just the same way. He's very, I mean, he's just, he's in the art and he's just like yep. very passionate about yep. what he art does. And music go together. Uh, a lot of famous musicians actually were art students. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, boy, I wish I could think of who. Um, I think John Lennon. We could probably look it up. I, I really want to look John it up. John Lennon met, uh, I think, if I got this right, John Lennon met Paul McCartney in art school. I think. Oh, really? Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah, look that one up. If you can. Um, I think so. Did they meet in art school? Yeah. And, uh, Well, it's like, it's like kind of, like, what is art? Like, why, like, it's like, just like a thing with being in touch with yourself and emotions. Like, there's well, you know, something people to say, it, right? You know, and it, you can make an art of all kinds of things, you know, mm-hmm. but it's, um, it is creativity. It's personal expression. Yeah. Um, personal expression would be a better it's way. It's very to, subjective, yeah. too. Yeah. There's so many outlets for it. Well, even when I was working on cars for a living, painting cars for a living, I considered it an art. Oh, yeah. heck yeah. Yeah. You know, and like there was, it was like something to it yeah. that was like soothing to me. Like there was something that I enjoyed about it and it was mm-hmm. very, like it filled that uh, like artistic yeah. part of me. Yeah. And I really, because I, I couldn't draw. I mean, I can draw some basic stuff, but it wasn't really, I wasn't like passionate about like that part of art, but there was still the art of but you were working with car. color. You were working with, uh, you were like shaping shapes. a car too. Mm-hmm. Whenever you're blocking it yeah. out, you're like you're, you're trying to get it yeah. nice and crisp and flat. And you're worried about the lines. You yeah. Know, all the lines, lines got to match up work. perfectly. Right. Yeah. There right. it was like yeah. certainly like an art. And I was like, that's what was really fulfilling for it for me, even painting the car and making it like, uh, just match perfectly, getting the color to look just right. Um, get the right shine on it, everything like yeah. that. There was like some, art piece to it that was very fulfilling to me. Yeah. I think, you know, when you put your heart and soul into something, it could be whatever. Um, but when you're really putting everything you've got into it and, you know, your mind, your heart, you're trying to be creative or you're trying to at least uh, make a positive statement of some sort, mm-hmm. it can be art. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And everybody has it in them too, sure. right? Uh, you know, yeah. In some do. form? Yeah, they do. Like they have, like it's it's like just a part of. You know, I have a theory. I think every person on earth has at least one good song in them. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you saying like can sing a good song or could, play could a good write song? a good song? Could write a good song. Yeah. Okay, I could get behind that because yeah. I can't sing to save my life, but I could, I could see that. Me neither, but they didn't stop me. So, uh. <laughs> just learning, or you just just don't care. Uh, singing, yeah. I learning I, how to sing. No, I started singing because there wasn't anybody else to do it, and so it's fun. Actually, mm-hmm. it is fun to sing. Yeah, until you have to listen to yourself, <laughs> the yep. playback of it, and you're yep. like, "Ooh, I do not sound good at I all." I know you don't sound like you hear yourself in your head. Mm-mm. Yeah, uh, you in your head, you think you sound great. And, yeah, in the shower, you sound awesome. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, but uh, no, I sing just because I like doing it. It's fun. And then that way I get to pick the songs, you know. Yeah. The, at least the songs that I do, you know. Sure. Yeah. Well, there's, you can learn how to sing too, right? Well, you can, yes. you Absolutely. You can be formally trained to sing, yes. So did you take any classes on how to learn how to sing? Nope. No. Same with, the, same with learning how to play the guitar. You basically taught yourself? For the most part, Self-taught. I got started with Mr. Lee, but then I took it and ran with it. Yeah. Is that just, as a guy, just hard-headed and stubborn and just want to do it your own way thing? Well, I think initially I was just a dumb kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't know any better. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did start to run with it, and I never stopped. And uh, I probably developed slower than I could have. Sure. You know, uh, just because I didn't have certain skill training that I might have missed out on, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, the thing is, I never stopped. Mm-hmm. So, you know, eventually, over time, you know, you just keep getting Develop better. the skills. Yeah. Just keep working on them, working on them. Yeah. yeah. And then, so you did art for eight years, and then you said what? You're like, or I guess so, 10 years, because you well, moved to Springfield. Eight, and eight years here, and two years there. in Springfield, yeah. And, uh, and at that point, I'm going, that was 10 years, and I'm going, 
Ooh, man, I don't think I want to do another 10 years because mm -hmm. it was, there were some things going on in education that I did not agree with. Okay. And without going deep down that mm -hmm. uh, path, um, and I think we can see some of the results nowadays. But, sure. But anyway, that being said, I thought, yeah, I need to come up with a new game plan, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, at that point in time, um, country music was starting to rock. This would have been early 90s. And I'm going, hmm. I'm in Springfield. I'm about 30 miles from Branson. I wonder. So I actually went down to Branson. And I knew a guy that was playing down there from Rosebud. Okay. David Rothemeyer. David Rothemeyer. Yeah. If anybody, Hard to name before. Yeah. His nickname was Dates. Um, here, let me back up a little bit. The kids would always say, hey, have you ever heard Dates playing banjo? Because they knew I played guitar. I'm going, no. So I, it was about the last day of school. I go, David, bring your banjo in. I'll bring my 12 string. And after school, we sat down and played music and he just had a blast. Mm -hmm. And then he, he started to give me some banjo lessons. I think I had four banjo lessons and he moved to Branson. And as far as I know, he's still down there. He hit down there and for at least one year, he was guitar player of the year down there. How cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And buddy, talk about skills, man, he had them. Uh, but I got a hold of him and said, hey, man, I think I want to come down there and see what's going on, see if I can get a gig. And so he was telling me, well, go down here such and such a day at a certain time. They're having unpublicized auditions. And so he let me in on some of that stuff. And I went to auditions to see if I could get in any, any of those shows. Uh, didn't really, uh, you know, I could play Southern Rock, but I wasn't playing what they wanted, you know. Okay. Except what did they want? Well, they were still kind of more... Uh, traditional and uh, show band kind of stuff, uh, show like theater, you know, music show kind of stuff. Okay, that's not a good description. It, uh, like who who would they want to listen to? You think you know like a band that would? Ah, uh, well, you know, there. The time that, while I was down there, Mickey Gilly had a uh, a show down there. Andy Williams brought one in the year I was there, built the theater the year I was there. I only was down there a year. Um, Roy Clark had a theater down there. So you were playing at theaters, not at like... I was, I was auditioning for theater gigs, but I didn't get one except for one that didn't really count. But uh, it was funny, though. I went to this audition... And it actually wasn't in Branson. It was at Bull Shoals, but they had a music theater. And uh, I went down there, and I, I told Liddy, I said, you know, I'd really like to just be your sound man, because at that point I was kind of not so interested in what they had going musically. You know, it wasn't quite what I could do, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but uh, I said, oh, I want to be your sound man. And so she went through, there were 10 guitar players there, plus everything else. And she went through all 10 of them, and she knew I had my guitar with me. She said, well, get up there and show me what you can do. Okay. Well, what's funny, I had a practice tape, a cassette tape. I had a practice tape of just songs that were different genres that were going on in the theaters. They all had certain songs and genres that they did. They'd do a bluegrass. You know, they'd do a, a rockabilly. They'd do a, oh, just... Uh, Pretty Woman. Every, every theater down there did Pretty Woman. Not, okay. the, not the Van Halen, the Roy Orbison. Okay. You know? And yeah. I had like a set of these kind of songs just to practice, you know, to keep my chops up. And she says, get up there and show me what you can do. And I am not, I am not lying. They called out every song on that tape. And I was a star. <laughs> yeah. Just rocked it. For I me. nailed every song. Cool. Every song. And she's going, I want you in my band. I'm going, Okay. Then we had our first rehearsal immediately. And she launched into a whole bunch of Broadway show tunes that I knew nothing about, that I'd heard, never played. And uh, I'm going, what did I get myself into? This is not anywhere close to Southern rock. And you don't even like the music. 
it, you know what? I'm I'm not going to say there's any kind of music I don't like, but it was you just weren't a fan of it. Yeah, it was not on any of my playlists. <laughs> sure, sure. So was it like also just part of having to learn how to do it? Um, it wasn't my kind of music. I mean, I would have had to learn the songs, you know, but I mean, that wasn't that big a deal. I mean, because a chord is a chord, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, it wasn't that kind of a deal. It just wasn't my cup of tea. And uh, she called me the next day. She said, I found my old guitar player. I won't need you. And I'm going... Oh, thank you. <laughs> so it was a blessing in disguise. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, but now you're out of a job. Well, I missed out on that gig, but you know what? That's okay. Uh, I'd rather miss out on a gig that wasn't going to float my boat than, sure. than do it just to say, I, yeah, I played in a theater, you know. So did you quit teaching at this point? I was done teaching when I, yeah, when I moved to Branson, I was done teaching. Like, I'm done. I'm, yeah. I'm going to pursue this. Um, was the whole idea behind it was just to pursue something that was let's uh, see. That, something more to keep you happy in life? Let's see if I can get a gig playing music. Yeah. yeah. Because that's what you cared more about. Well, at that point, it's like, you know, I was shifting gears, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, so let's see. Let's see what happens, you know. And it was a really good learning experience. And uh, I saw some interesting stuff. I saw fantastic guitar players get passed over because they didn't look right, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I saw not so great guitar players get selected because they knew the right people. Uh, there were, sure, it, it was you see that all the time. Yeah, it was political. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had auditions, but they already knew who they had they were going to band. Pay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm not going to say that was everywhere all the time, but still, you know, uh, that's things I saw. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so, and plus, I only gave, I gave myself a limit. I said, I'll see what happens. I'll give myself a year, you mm-hmm. know, I'll see what happens. And uh, so nothing happened. Uh, I did play at a club, which was fun, but it wasn't a theater, but it was a club. And uh, uh, guys from those shows would come by after the show ended, you know, and uh, come by and we'd have big old jam sessions and stuff. And, at the club? Yeah, okay. yeah. And, uh, but the club's paying you. Uh, yeah, but we were like the host band kind of thing, you know. And uh, they'd have other bands come in, but, you know, if they didn't have anybody else, we were there playing, you know. Okay, yeah. And so then, a little steady work. Yeah. Some steady money, yeah. probably. Yeah, and, then, and I had a day job working in a wood carving shop, which was cool. But uh, I got to know, got to be friends with a guy named Earl Grigsby, uh, who was a bass player. And he was uh, the bass player on uh, Charlie Daniels' first four albums. Oh, really? Yeah. How cool. And well, Earl, this was, this was uh, at this time, this is, has he already done that or no? He was past that, and he was looking to settle down. So he, he was in Branson because you don't have to go on the road if you're playing a, a show in Branson. Sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Earl was a tremendous bass player. Unbelievable. You could throw anything at him, and he could jump right in and play it and hear the chord changes coming up a mile away. And uh, we'd, we'd play down at the, the club, and then we'd go over where I was living and play some more, you know. Uh, but uh, that was fun because Earl was so good, and he didn't read a lick. Mm-hmm. He absolutely did not read anything he played strictly by ear and he was unbelievably good but i learned something in my opinion earl was probably one of the best bass players in the whole branson area but when andy williams brought his show to town they built a theater and they had auditions the word went out you've got to read because they're using charts and that completely knocked earl out of it he, mm-hmm. did, he did just disqualified him from even immediately. Being he didn't even go down and try because they were going to put charts in front of you. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, as good as he was, and I mean, we're talking about a bass player for Charlie Daniels, you know, as good as he was, he was not eligible for that show. So, when he was playing the bass, he was playing off of someone else's chords. 
he, he heard, was listening, yeah, he, so he was just playing off of their chords. He wasn't actually reading any script music or nothing like that. Right. He was playing totally by ear. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're, we're, we're over there at my place one night. It was him uh, and me and a guy playing keyboards, and we were having this really long jam. And I mean, it was going on and on. And uh, I was sitting on the couch, and I was leaning back, had my eyes closed, and I was leaning back and playing, and we just kept jamming. And it just kept going, and it never slowed down, and it never fell apart. And it was going on for a while, so I opened up my eyes real slow. I look, and the guy playing the keyboards over there with his head down and his eyes closed, and Earl's sitting over on the other couch with his head back and his eyes closed. And every one of us was playing with our eyes closed mm-hmm. and just tearing it up. Yeah, just vibing, feeling it, yeah. and just rolling yeah. with it. And uh, so, isn't that what a lot of music is? It's just kind of like feeling, playing yeah. from with the right people, the people that know how to do it. Sure. Some people can't break away from their charts, from their sheet music. Yeah, but those they're they're probably the ones that aren't going to take it very far, right? Like, no, I feel not like, really, because like, a lot of piano players. That's like a pretty common thing. Is they can a, they can sight read better than anyone out there. They can play these super intricate parts, but if you ask them. If you give them a key and try to get them to jam, they can't. Right. No, not all of them, but I've yeah, seen, a I've lot seen of them. that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But but a a, a solid reader um, is the the level that can do studio work. So that's a whole different uh, skill okay. level there, where yeah. you can actually have a chart put in front of you mm-hmm. and and play a song and get it right in two takes. You got to know how to do both. It helps to know. If, if, if you're going to you, want to take it to if another If you one. want to be a successful working musician and not, you know, just depend on hitting it lucky, you know, sure. um, you really should learn to read as much, as, as good as you can and develop those skills along with your other skills, like playing by ear and that stuff. And uh, it's, it's a whole different level. Yeah, because if not, you're going to end up like your friend Earl. Yeah. That he couldn't w- read it. So as good as he was, off. he was limited. Yeah. Uh, in that I can regard. See that. Yeah. In that regard. Yeah. Yeah. And the last time I saw uh, Ringo Starr perform live, you know, he sings now, he doesn't play drums. His drummer was using sheet music. He was flipping the pages while they were playing. Oh, really? And I can almost promise I was like, he had to. It was probably just a studio drummer that they brought in. Absolutely. And they yeah. rehearsed a few times before the show. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, that's actually very common. The, See, I guess I just never pay attention. Like, I probably just don't even well, realize it. Yeah. Watch one, you know, sometime there you get the opportunity, there's a big production. Uh, oh, remind me to tell you about Stevie Ray Vaughan in just a second. But you watch a big production, and they are working off of charts, um, sheet music. Mm-hmm. And uh, now, of course, uh, with the technology, it's not necessarily paper anymore it's on a, like an ipad a tablet. Or yeah 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 and you got a little foot controller that you step on it changes pages for you mm-hmm. yeah do you guys do that barely covered i feel like with the lyrics um yeah i was say i feel like with the lyrics yeah they I've don't that. but they they try their best to learn it but if it's a new song it's kind of like a safety sheet for them mm-hmm. you know it's oh. better better than getting lost sure he, I, he writes yeah. all his lyrics down he like hand writes them I, all down. I'm old school. I've got them on notebook paper. All sure. Is it, down. is it a better way for you to intake it when you? Read you know, I can song? remember a song. I can remember the chord changes. I can remember the solos. I can remember everything but the words. You know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does writing it down help you remember, or is it just well, it, 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 doing it enough times help me? Will help me remember. Yeah. Writing it is a start on that. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's it like another me, way to put yeah. it in your mind. Yeah, and it kind of gets it. Yeah, planted in there, but. Uh, yeah, if I do it enough times, and here lately I've actually been working on memorizing because I've got some newer songs uh, new to the band, and uh, I've been working on trying to do them enough that I can do them without looking at my cheat sheet. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's just for me to keep my brain moving, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I gotta tell you a story. Okay, before, before Reading, he goes on to Stevie Ray Vaughan or the next story, he still has the bass guitar that he was had when he was playing with Earl. Yeah. And that's the bass guitar I learned on and yeah. played on. Oh, cool. Yeah. Earl that's actually cool. adjusted the pickups yeah. on it to make it sound better. He set it yeah. up and it's still it's still out there playing shows. It's played with Barely Covered. Oh, how cool. Yeah. So Barely yeah. Covered has a relation with the Charlie Daniels band. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to throw that plug in. Yeah, that's we, awesome. We basically opened for them. <laughs> 
How about that? We're yeah, merely cool. famous. Yeah. So talking about charts and that stuff, uh, whatever the uh, David Boy album was, which I uh, won't know off the top of my head, he had Stevie Ray Vaughan play guitar solos on it. Okay, and the album was a big hit. I think the song was called Let's Dance. It was a big hit. Maybe that was the name of the album. Um, he had Stevie Ray Vaughan play guitar on there. And it was a big hit. And so they're going to do a world tour. And they've got Stevie Ray lined up to play guitar on this world tour. So he shows up to the first rehearsal. And uh, they stuck charts in front of him. He goes, what's that? And they go, that's your part you're going to play. He goes, I ain't playing that. Now, you got to keep in mind two things. Steve Ray was a blues artist. And in the blues genre, it's improvisational. You've got a basic form of the song that you're playing with. But when it's time to solo, you improvise your solo. That's... 99.9% .9 of the time. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. If you okay. listen to any blues artist, but Stevie Ray, people know who he is. If you listen to Stevie Ray and you listen to his studio album, and then you hear him play that same song live, there will be similar things going on in his solo, but he's embellishing, he's improvising, and it's not the studio solo. Mm -hmm. It's not it'll, the same as the studio version. It'll be similar. It'll be very similar because it's he's playing the song. He's playing to the song, so there are things about it that uh, make it sound like the song. Mm -hmm. But uh, when he played that with David Boy in the studio, he probably took like three runs at a solo and they kept the best one. That's real typical. Okay. You give it two or three shots, you know. Sometimes it Oh, and they'll talk about these. These guys all talk about, yeah, we did two, three, four, five solos, and the first one was the best. Quite often, they'll just go with the first one because it's the most honest and. Yeah, it's the most genuine one. Yeah. Okay. And the most felt one. And then everyone after that, you're starting to try to uh, compose it more. You sure. Know? And so Stu Ray goes, I'm not doing that. And the music director goes, Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yeah. Yes, you are. You have to do it. Yeah. Everybody's using charts. No, I'm not. I'm not doing it. Stevie Ray quit the tour on the first rehearsal. Uh -huh. And people were stunned. They're mm -hmm. going, because he wasn't that big of a name at that point. He had some recognition. He had some albums. But he wasn't a household name. You quit David Boy, you know? Mm -hmm. And... uh because this was early on in his career still. It was earlier than later, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how many albums he had at the time. Um, but uh, he, he wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the one thing, because he, he's a blues player. The other thing was he couldn't read. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Why, why would he read? He's a blues player, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and uh, so it was like a big deal. Stevie Ray quit David Bowie, mm -hmm. and but it didn't hurt his career any at all. Mm -hmm. I feel like for a musician, they got to do what makes them happy, or they're not going to do it. Like that's a big part of it. Yeah, that's that's why you have the term sellout, though, is doing what's going to get them success. Yeah. So I feel like when it, and I feel like a lot of people ways. when they sell out, that's when they go downhill too. Yeah, that's when you get a lot. You know, it starts to eat them up. Yeah, yeah mass-produced yeah. music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're, they become less satisfied with what's going on. Yeah. 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 And their, their heart's not in it as either. Right. And then I, think, I feel like the people that are listening to music, too, can tell. Yeah. Uh, you can tell when you listen to music that yeah. it, there's, there's just no There's a reason there's so many it. fans that will say the people's early albums are their best. Mm -hmm. Their first yeah. two albums were where Absolutely. it's at. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I know a lot of albums like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or they'll get on you know, a multi-album contract, and they just figure out a formula, and they keep the same sound. Sure. That happens a lot, too. Yeah, that is very common. Yeah. I just got closer to the mic and got louder. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it, it picks up and it, it goes up and down. They work really well, so you'll be fine with that. Good. Um, so what did you do after, like in Branson when you were playing with Earl? Did you guys start a band or you, did you decide? Earl was, uh, Earl was uh, gainfully employed in the theaters down there 
and okay. I don't remember which one he was at. But and that stuff changes year to year too. You you can have a gig at a theater down there. And when the season ends and they're gearing up for the next season, they have auditions. That was back to that thing. So you had was, a re-audition. Even when you had the gig the to begin with, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're just trying to look for new talent, new talent. Well, they are kind of looking for that, uh, you know, maybe that's something special that that they want to jump on first. But it's, I think, it's, you know, you kind of have to give a, a, a sense of being fair, too, and giving everybody a shot, you know. Sure. Uh, but... I mean, if the guy was already in the show, he's got an inside track because he knows the, the tunes, he knows the routine and all that. So mm -hmm. you really got to wow him. Sure. You know, to to be able to bump somebody, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so so that was fun. It was a neat experience. Working in the wood carving shop was a fun experience. Um, but then... Uh, I, like I said, I only gave myself a year. So I came back to Owensville and uh, then uh, just got a job just to pay off my truck and uh, figure out what I'm going to do. And I got in with band, um, local band, and uh, ended up over time, that band just went on and on and on. And wow, man. We played everywhere for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were called, it started out, it was the Badlands Country Band. Then we dropped country from the name because we were playing a lot of rock and roll. And then we dropped band from the name. We, we, we were just Badlands. Mm -hmm. But wow, man, we played all the time. And it was just weekends. And uh, one year, I remember one year, we played 48 out of 52 weekends. And it was Fridays and Saturdays. Mm -hmm. We never took one-nighters. And uh, so other than it was just two nights a week, it was almost, you know, kind of like a full-time job. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. Uh, but, wow, we played everywhere uh, in the region. We played Jeff City, Columbia. Um, sometimes we went out of state. We actually had a gig. Somebody saw us in Owensville or Union or something. And asked us to play for their club, which was in Indiana. And uh, we're going, well, okay. This is how much we need. And they said, good, come on down. Cool. So. That's yeah. probably the fun part about it is some of the, like, some of the, just the cool experiences you get. It was a, yeah, it was a road trip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, we headed down there. And, uh, man, Trevor was like, he, he was an infant. Mm -hmm. And uh, so. His mom and I went down there, and we drug him along. He didn't know what was going on. Uh, but we went down there to Indiana. We had a van. Uh, they gave us, I don't think they gave us motels. They had a motel lined up for us that we stayed in. Um, we played Friday night, and in the middle of the night, it snowed. <laughs> and uh, like a foot of snow. Typical Indiana, I feel like. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I go there, I feel like it snows on me. <laughs> yeah. And we played Saturday anyway, um, and uh, came home. And by the time we got home, um, I'd made five dollars. <laughs> oh, because of the gas and because yeah. of the hotel, everything like yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, damn. So you guys uh, kind of cut you guys yourself a little short there. Um, we should have charged more, probably. But yeah. you know what? It was fun. Yeah, and it was your first out of state gig too. With, probably with Badlands. Uh, I think it might have been with them, yeah, yeah. Because he uh, lived in Arkansas for a little bit too. When he was well, yeah, I played. I, I lived in Arkansas. I went to school down there for a while and, and played in a band down there. And we played over in Memphis and stuff. Um, you played a festival with ZZ Top, right? Like it wasn't like you weren't the direct opener, but you uh, you if, played, if, and then there was a break. Yes, and then they played the. Evening. I'm glad you reminded yeah, me. Yeah, so technically <laughs> if, he opened uh, for ZZ Top. <laughs> if if I want to. Like, try to stretch the truth, uh, stretch reality, try to brag a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, Do your so, own horn. Yeah. Yeah. I opened up for ZZ Top. Uh, and between our act and ZZ Top, there were about 10 other acts. Uh, <laughs> sure. I you know, thought there was a gap of time. No, it was the same day, though. Same day. Yeah. It yeah, was the same cool. stage. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. It was the same stage. Um, and it was so early in their career that they just had, uh, five o'clock shadows. They didn't have big beards, mm -hmm. but, uh, we knew who they were. 
Mm-hmm. I think they only had one album, maybe. You two. didn't get to meet him, though? <sighs> you know what? <laughs> he could have. There's a story there, too. So they're down there. It's, man, I don't know where we were. It was the middle of Arkansas in a field somewhere, and there was a, a lake, not a huge lake, but, uh, you know, there was a lake, and the, the stage was set up on the dam of the lake, and the sound was set up on a floating dock, which I thought was unbelievably unsafe. All the electrical equipment yeah. was on a dock yeah. that was floating in the middle of, of the lake. But, okay, I wasn't in you know, on the planning, so that's what it was. Well, ZZ Top was down there in an RV. You know, they didn't have a tour bus. They had an RV. And uh, my buddy Ralph, a good friend of mine, Ralph says, well, let's go down there and talk to him. Yeah, okay. So we start heading down there, and we uh, cross paths with a fellow coming our way that was all bloodied up. And we're going, dude, what's going on, man? He said, I went down to talk to ZZ Top, and their bodyguards beat me up. <laughs> Oh, okay, so that's why you're like, I'm not going to go down there and get beat up. I chickened well. out. Yeah, I chickened out. But now you have to know my friend Ralph. Um, you know, he could talk his way into the back door of the White House. Okay. Okay. Yeah, he's got that gift, uh, which maybe is not a gift. Maybe it's a curse. I don't know. But I think in that situation, it might have been a curse. I don't know. <laughs> he said, "Well, I'm going to go down there." So he went down there. He hung out with ZZ Top. He talked to him. He got their permission to film them while they played their show that night oh wow yeah and it's just I mean, how did he get beat up by the bodyguard then you know what it's ralph he just didn't have that charisma he just showed up he said let me in yeah oh, okay it's, it's just it's ralph i mean so he, it took getting beat up to get in but he got in well he, he didn't, didn't get beat ralph up. did not get beat in. up ralph did not get beat up it was the guy we met coming from oh from the the other guy we didn't know oh okay yeah it was some other guy we didn't know okay and, I and yeah, and I, I said, I'm not going down there. And Ralph went down there and hung out with Talked him. Talked his way in. Yeah. Oh, damn, yeah, you should have went with him. I should have went with him. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, oh, well, you know, we've got a Super 8 videotape somewhere with just video, no sound. <laughs> with ZZ Top? ZZ Top he playing. video? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That'd be cool to put on YouTube or something. Yeah. For everybody yeah, to see. Yeah. Old, old footage. Yeah. yeah. No sound, but... Uh, I mean, it's, it's them. It's, it's the, as far away as you and me, you know, mm-hmm. that's how close he was to him, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that was a, a brush with uh, fame. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Well, I'm sure you've got to, like, cross paths with a lot of uh, very... You know, Badlands played... Uh, we did some uh, opening acts up in uh, Jeff City for a few couple, about three Are years. Are you still with probably. Badlands? No, well, yeah, but we don't do anything. We're very inactive. Played last if, year. I got to play with them last year. Um, okay. Yep. Drummer yep. was trying to move out of state, and it was for the bass player's daughter's 30th birthday party. So it was like a little Badlands reunion. Mm-hmm. And I took the we drums. will get together for somebody's birthday or something oh, like cool. that. Yeah. But, uh, and you're with another band right now, too, as well? Right. right Multiple. Yeah. Two um, like established and then a bunch of like pieced together bands. I, uh, I've got my main band. J.D. Heckler, the J.D. Heckler band. That's a made-up name. Uh, but people call me J.D. sometimes. But <laughs> Why is that? They just think he's J.D. Heckler. Well, the way we set up, I happen to be in the middle, so it looks like maybe I'm supposed to be the front man. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, J.D. is just a made-up. You know what? We, we put the band together. We played down at the Lake of the Ozarks uh, under just a, a name that somebody just made up on the spot. Um, and so we're on the microphones, we're going, well, hey, we want a new name. So, you know, if anybody got any ideas, you know, let us know. And uh, there was a, a waitress down there. We were giving a hard time teasing her. And she actually came up with like, I don't know, 15 band names. But one of them was the Hecklers. She said we should be called the Hecklers because sure. we were giving her a hard time. Uh-huh. So we took our first initials. Everybody in the band's name started with a J or D, and we took the, the initials mm-hmm. JD and put it with Heckler and made the JD Heckler band. Cool. Yeah, just made it up from that, mm-hmm. from from what that gal had told us. But uh, that's my main band. We play mostly at the Lake of the Ozarks. Uh, my old band from Jeff City uh, called I-70 Overdrive, I fill in with them. I, I, I sub with them when they need, like, Sometimes a guitar player, sometimes a bass player. I do play bass. Uh, guitar's my first instrument. 
I'll sub with them. Um, you don't go practice with them. You know, now talking about skills and stuff and in that, um, I played with them for three years. I was excused from band practice because I would do my homework and I would come to the gig and I knew the song. Mm -hmm. And all I had to do was just follow them through the ending because songs fade out most of the time. And uh, in three years, I practiced three times with them, once a year. And, and you just showed up, showed them that you could play it, and, and they were happy with and it? And they, they were good with that, yeah. Cool. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, you got to do your homework. You mm -hmm. know? Uh, you know, because, I mean, the songs are structured, and you're doing cover tunes, you know, and this this is not like a blues jam, okay? So. It needs to sound a certain way. You you had to you had to play the song a certain at least you know enough to be recognizable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh, and we had some of the man. Uh, Hotel California is a challenge to play. Is it now? It is. Yeah, because that's not one that you really want to fake your way through. Okay, it's too recognizable. Yeah, yeah. Is it tough to play though, or is it just one that's so recognizable that you want to make it's sure? It's got really right? distinct parts. It does have distinct parts. Yes, that's a way of saying it. It's got very distinct parts, which, if you, uh, if you just wing in your way through it, it's going to be very obvious. Okay. I mean that 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 twin solo at the end, the two guitars are playing in harmony together. In the end of that song, uh, you, you know, you better know that, you know. Okay. Because you guys have got to blend and you've got to play in time together and you know and one guy can't go north while the other guy goes south you know sure that's um, one of those songs the band came out later and said they would have never wrote it if they knew like they'd have to play it every single show i mean that's how well of a song well known of a song everyone knows hotel everyone california. knows that song hotel california the Eagles said they should have never wrote it really yeah because they the rest of their career they're playing hotel california every show you, sure. can't, you can't go to an Eagles show and they not play Hotel California. But yeah. it also probably helped make them Yeah, it's also part of their famous. success. Yeah, oh, yeah. It, it was part of their greatness, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Um, so, you know, playing with that band every once in a while, I did a couple. I've done three, three or four dates with them this, this summer. Still got some coming up. Uh I'm part of a blues jam, a monthly blues jam in Rolla called the Rolla Regional Blues Jam. We never named the band. <laughs> but That's just how they book you? Yeah, that's how they advertise it. The Rolla Regional Blues Jam. Uh, first Sunday of every month, unless there's a holiday or some conflict like that. And that's at the Tater Patch in at Rolla. The, at the Tater oh, Patch really? in Rolla. Yep. Yeah. And we've, we're, in, we're in our seventh year headed into our eighth year. Uh, You're doing that. Doing that, yeah. It's it's once a month. Yeah. Yep. First Damn. Sunday of every month. First Sunday. Damn. Yeah. Trevor's played in it. I played yeah. in. I played bass yeah, and drums in it. If people can just show up. Yeah. You know, they, if you've got the skill, you can show. It's blues, so like we said, it's not structured as much. It's got that bass outline, and then people come in and they add their part to it. Bring a guitar and bring we've got guitar, an amp your, for you. Your bass. Yeah. I've seen. Guy had a set of like it was bongos and. Yeah, a bunch of other percussion instruments. Mm -hmm. He was just back there doing his thing. Keep Keyboards. It. And that's that's probably is that something that's just for fun? Yeah, yeah. People just show up for fun and play. Right. Yeah. There's no pay for that gig. Oh, we're getting paid peanuts, but sure. Uh, okay. We're getting we're getting gas money. Okay. Yeah. I see. I see. Uh no, it's all about fun. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it is fun because they get to jam the songs. You know, they they can run away with a solo and then bring it back in when they're ready. Mm-hmm. It's open ended like that. Yeah. yeah, that'd be fun to watch. Yep, it's a lot of fun. And uh, he breaks out the harmonica a few times a night, which I love watching. You do? Yeah, that's my but, third instrument. <laughs> that's cool. Yep. Yeah, that is a cool one. Yeah, I haven't played it. Haven't played it much lately. But harmonica is funny. There are some guys that are really good at it, but harmonicas are what's called diatonic. Every key that you play in has a specific key of harmonica that you play. And if, if you need to play a D harmonica, that's the, the key that it's in. So you don't use it if you need to play an A harmonica. 
Okay. Oh, yeah, because there's different harmonicas. Yeah. It's not just one harmonica. You have harmonica. to have a whole set of harmonicas. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I do remember that now. Yeah. Yep. And uh, I don't have one of those ammo belts, but you'll see guys with ammo belts. and, and They got different they got ones that they can pull out. And, yeah. Each yeah. one's a different key. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So you change key according to what key the song is in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But... Uh, Any other bands? Oh, well, Okay. Got J.D. Heckler, got uh, I-70 Overdrive, and the Blues Jam, and Badlands, which uh, is about once every three years now. <laughs> it's not very often. Uh, and then we played under a name. We um, were... Uh, Flesh and Blood. Flesh and Blood when we did the Mob Show, yeah. You too? Yep. yep. Yeah. We did it one year, just the two of us, as um, Flesh and Blood, you know, father and son. And he drew up a logo. It's really neat. And we just had to have a logo for the shirt. Um, and then the next year... Rick from Badlands, the bass player from Badlands, played with us. So we're so we've played twice as Flesh and Blood. Two piece one year and three piece the next year. Yeah, cool. yeah, and it was a lot of fun. Yep. Yeah, yep. You bring it back ever? You think? Think you play again? Uh, you know, can't rule it out. The opportunity has to present itself, sure. which I don't think it has. Uh, Do you guys just play together though? Yeah, yeah. Like, like on like today, you guys are just hanging out. You like you don't play some music? Yeah, we once a week. Yep. Um, I'm trying to get better at guitar. So okay. once a week we meet up and play guitar. Cool. You know, his mom and I paid for drum lessons for him. And uh, somewhere in there he learned to play guitar and I didn't teach him. <laughs> YouTube. Yeah, like we were talking earlier, I yeah. taught myself the, you know, just the basic chords that most songs are made up of on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And I just did that for a few years. And Why didn't you go to your dad? It's intimidating. Yeah. <laughs> My dad's the guitar man. You know, yeah. everybody that's played guitar in Owensville has walked through his room at some point. Sure. He's a career musician. I was like, I'm not learning guitar from him. I learned bass from him. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, kept, I was like, I'll teach myself. But Sure. I, I tabbed out a whole bunch of songs for Barely Covered yeah. for him. He, so taught me, play. he taught me every song I played with Barely Covered up until like the recent years. Okay. So later on, after you kind of learned the basics as a guitar. Well, I just started looking up tabs instead of having him help me. Just because oh, okay. there were so many songs I had to learn. Early on, we were only playing you know, 15 songs at a time. Mm-hmm. So, so it was, it was easy easier. to go to hell. Yeah, it was easy. And he had, you know, free time. And now he, he's at Lake of the Ozarks two nights every weekend. Mm-hmm. So a lot less free time. Sure. And that band, they've got great songs. Ooh, Barely Covered? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. always fun listening. They are fun. They are fun to go see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you like, you like, I mean, you still listen to new rock songs that come out and new music that comes out? Like you know, your, your genre of music that you like. What do you like right now? Um. You still I, continue to learn I, and learn. I laugh music. at myself, man. I I laugh at myself. It's like you know, uh, I don't hardly know any songs from this century. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, I like the old stuff. There's, uh, there's one. There's Larkin Poe. There's one of my favorite current bands. It's called Larkin Poe, and it's two sisters, and uh, they they're just they're killer. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're a little bit bluesy. They're a little bit rock. They started out kind of country folky bluegrass when they were young but uh but they're rocking it up uh but trevor will mention somebody say hey you need to listen to this group you know so i'll check them out and rock and roll is alive and well it's kicking Mm -hmm. it's it's going strong you just don't hear it on the radio no you don't no it's not i mean locally there's not like a a lot of rock locally so like there's 105.7 The Point yeah. in St. Louis. Yeah, and then you have like your classic rock stations. Yeah, but they're not playing new music. No, they're no, not, it's they're really not just playing that new stuff. And there used to be a 93.7 or 93.3. Was it 93.3? I don't know. There's, There's like a 93.7 a, out in Jeff City, isn't there? Or yeah, but that's country station, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, there, but, I think it was 93.3. Okay, I'm thinking 96.7. Well, yeah, 96.7. Yeah, Is that Jeff City? Yeah. I think so. Columbia well, or Jeff? Oh. Something like that. Yeah. But um, no, that stuff, that new stuff. Um, I mean, it, so many people have gone independent, started their own labels and that kind of thing, you know, mm-hmm. instead of trying to deal with the big mega record companies and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, you know, they're not on the radio that much, but they're out there. They're very active. They're playing yeah. everywhere, you know. Well, that's the cool thing with the power of the internet now. Yeah. There, there's so much technology out there. There's so much yeah. information out there. And they can just put it on YouTube or yeah. Spotify. Yeah. Or whatever platform yeah. they want, and they can really start to grow that way. Absolutely, because that's how a lot of 
uh, musicians got screwed over. I think that's like years the ago, route right? to success nowadays is YouTube Certainly. and social media. Certainly, yeah. because you can be your own producer, you can yep. be your own right. manager. You don't need yeah, like you don't need this massive studio company or this yeah. massive producer because they take most of the money oh, from yeah. these bands. Oh yeah, where they make essentially yeah. like no money at all. Yep. Yeah, you know I heard a, a stat one time. I don't remember who it was, and they said something like, "You've got to tour like for three years to." pay back what the record company first loaned you. Yeah, that's when, crazy. When you first signed. That you know? is crazy. And they're probably making tons of money. Oh, they're making, yeah, making tons of money off Well, of they're it. trying to do that with podcasts now. Oh, sure. Like not. something like this where they, like big companies start to see up and coming podcasts and then they offer them a deal and they say, hey, come on with our company. Something like Bar, Barstool Sports or something like yeah. that. They'll be like, hey, you should come on with us. We'll get you a deal. We'll get you out there to the world, everything like that, but they're taking all their money. It'll mm. always be Or a ton way. of their money. Not all, but a ton of it. T too much. Same, way too much, yeah. yeah. And yeah. especially as they grow, they don't renegotiate the contracts like they should. And yeah, it's just, yeah. it's insane. It's always about people who you know. Like in Branson, back in 90s, it was about who you knew. You know, it helped you get a leg up, and that's just what they do. Yeah. They have the connections, and you forfeit your pay for that level of success. Mm-hmm. You know, thinking about, you know, unknown or not on, you know, not on radio kind of stuff up. There is something I watch every once in a while called Jam in the Van. Yeah, I wanted to bring this up because this is where yeah. we both found Larkin. We found Larkin Poe individually. And, you know, I was like, you got to Oh, you get him, like, you, like. Yeah, no, I was like, you, you got to listen tell to each other about it. And he's like, I've heard them before. He's like, they're really good. Okay. And, yeah, they're great. It's a, uh, it's called Jam in the Van. They've got an RV van that they converted into a music studio, a recording studio. Wow. And they go to uh, music festivals, and it could be wherever, California or Nevada or Utah or wherever, Tennessee or whatever, and they'll invite bands that are at that festival performing. They'll invite them to come in and do a show. Is this like a, this a YouTube channel? Yeah, it's a YouTube channel. It's, okay. it's on YouTube, yeah. And... Uh, the quality of these recordings is phenomenal. Sure. It's not like, you know, just some yokels. Yeah. You know, messing around. It's top notch. And they get bands in there and it's just an RV and they're standing on top of each other. I mean, I don't, you know. Yeah, I was going to say. It started as a van, you know, jam in the van. Yeah. And if you watch those early videos, it's so funny because they really are right on top of each other. They're right on I top would, of each other. I would imagine. Yeah. So like it's, not, to yeah. Try it's to nicer fit in the RV. Guitars and drums and yeah. Yeah. mic and everything in there, plus yeah. the production stuff in yeah. there, too, to record well, it all. They'll have some, like, big bands and, you know, multiple horn instruments, multiple singers, a percussionist, a drummer, guitar, bass, other guitar, yeah. and also keyboards. So the RV, I mean, they bring in some big and They bands squeeze them all in there. But and they, they get tight. outstanding recordings. Yeah. And... uh I guess that's like technology also nowadays is technology so advanced. Technology is through the roof. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. just the information that's out there. Yeah, well, just like, I mean, look up. at your soundboard. That doesn't take up much room at all. So no. So it's a lot easier now. Dude, this thing changed my life yeah. when mm, I got yeah. this. I was trying to do, I had some other mics and I had, I was like trying to plug the XLR cable into it and I, it was like an interface. I was trying to use an interface that didn't have like the, like I couldn't like, you know, up the gain and stuff like that, like just ah, sitting here. Yeah. I had to use a program on my computer yep. and it didn't work well with my other program uh, and it yep. was such a pain in the butt. Yep. And I got this, I plugged everything into it one day and turned my computer on and it was all working together within an hour, yep. an hour tops. And it made my life so much better. And I've just beat my head against the wall for like six months. And I was like, man, I wish I would have just invested in that from the get-go, but yeah, and look that back, was kind of... Look at like old music documentaries. They have a whole wall of just like... Yeah. I, I couldn't tell you a half, a quarter of it does, half, any of it. Yeah. And now it's all just condensed down into these little boards that they can take it. Even away. professional studios are like that too? I mean, it's a lot. Lots more compressed. Lot, yeah. Okay. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, that's what, when you, whenever I think of a studio, I think of a room like this big, that's like a whole wall of Well, that's like pictures different you always stuff. see, yeah. Yeah, and then like a yeah. big glass thing where yeah. they're yeah. sitting in there. That's the pictures you always see. And some of that old stuff, they, they people still want to get their hands on some of that old stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes you're going for that old sound. You know, people go and do like older recording styles on vinyl, on a tape, and it just, it's a different feeling. Sure. And that's, 
that is that's just probably people that just really love music. Yeah. And they're just trying to or like they're chasing a certain inspiration. Maybe their inspiration that's how they recorded, and now they're a modern band and they just want that little something. They're chasing that little something. Do you do you guys know who Jelly Roll is? I know the name. I've seen I've seen stuff about him. I don't know much about him. He's you know like there's a lot of new country that I don't like, and he's kind of like son of a center. Is that him? I don't know. I don't know. I know uh, Heaven's got a smoking. I hope Heaven has a smoking section. I think it's called smoking section. <laughs> Um, but I knew, that was like one of the songs that I real big and tattooed up. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I don't know a lot of his songs, but I listened to a podcast with him on it. And he said that all his inspiration is like old, like set, like he only listens to like seventies mm. rock music. Like he's like, I don't like anything new. He's like, I don't listen to nothing new. He's like, that's where all mine sure comes not. from. And, um, yeah, it's just interesting. Like where people find. Yeah. Inspiration there's there's from. so much inspiration. Mm-hmm. And Trevor, uh, told me one day we gotta listen. We gotta watch this video. Foo Fighters. Oh, the Sonic Highway documentary. The Sonic Highway. That's a good documentary. That documentary for like so cool. So Foo Fighters, they're they're at such a level of success that Dave Grohl just likes doing weird stuff now. Okay. Um, but this wasn't super weird. This was before they started going crazy. He went. They did a documentary where they went to different famous studios across the country. So, you know, from California to New York, um, big name studios, a lot of history. And they took inspiration from the famous art, artists that have recorded there. And they like brought that into their songs. And the majority they, they of the They wrote song, a song for each place. Yeah each, yeah. each studio was like the inspiration for their song. And they would bring in guest artists. So I think they had what, Joe Walsh at their California. I believe band, so, yeah. Um, Zach Brown Band like produced the one song in like Memphis or Nashville, wherever they were in Tennessee. Yep. And that was like the whole premise of the documentary and the album. Um, and it's one, it's probably my favorite album by them. Really? Yeah. It's called Sonic highway. That's the album name and the documentary name. I have to check that out. It was an HBO. Documentary. Cause I am a big Foo Fighters it's, fan yeah. or I used to be at least. It's yeah. a great documentary. I mean, it's just nonstop interesting and entertaining and, you know, talk about being creative and stuff. They wrote each song for each studio in town that they were in. And they talked to people who had been the early movers and shakers in the music business uh, in that town, you know, and uh, took inspiration from them. And they would take, you know, phrases or sentences from their conversations with these people and work them into the songs. Yep. And uh, and they, some of these studios they talked about, they just had something something about them, you know, some extra something, you know, that was unexplainable that made the recording sound so good coming out of that studio. Like just like the sound of them. It was the sound of the room. It was the sound of the studio. Oh, okay. The acoustics, the way it was, it was laid out. The, the way it was laid out in the acoustics and stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which cool. then tagging onto that. So wild how like just little things like that yeah. can make music sound a certain way. Then uh, if you're a country fan, you know, Zach Brown band, Dave Grohl produced a very short, album is like five songs but i think it's some of their coolest songs and it's called the grohl session by okay. zach brown band uh -huh. um and it's none of their radio hits mm -hmm. but they're it's so cool like just five and they're all longer songs and they just rock zach brown band's so cool yeah i'll have to check that out and they have a short so the hbo series was foo fighters they have just like an hour-long video of dave grohl producing zach brown band which is funny because he shows up and they play the first song and he goes oh thank god zach brown's like what he goes, you guys are good. <laughs> he goes, what do you mean? Because I guess they ran into each other at like a music awards or a record shop or something. And Zach Brown was like, hey, this is who I am. Will you produce? And he didn't listen to anything leading up. He just showed up. He was mm -hmm. like, yeah, I'll do it. And he's like, oh, you guys are good. Like, mm -hmm. this is going to be good. <laughs> he was relieved. And yeah. Zach Brown was like, are you kidding me? Uh -huh. You just showed up? <laughs> That's so funny. It's, that is funny. It's funny. Mm -hmm. So you guys interested in playing this game? Yeah. So what, what I got is... It is, uh, it's all acoustic instrumentals. Yeah. And I kind of laid it out to where it's like some like softball hits at the beginning. And then towards the end, I think it might get a little harder, especially I would say for you, I'll Dave. Probably, I'll probably get stumped right away. It'll probably no, no, you won't get stumped right <laughs> It'll away. It'll probably be hard for me too. I think, uh, <laughs> what, and, and what the way I want to play it is I want to, I want to play the instrumental, the acoustic instrumental. Uh, which is probably going to get this video copyrighted like as soon as I post it. Oh, mm. but it's whatever. Um, 
but I want you guys not to say okay. the name of the song. I want to see, like, I want you guys both to listen and see if you guys can both figure it out before someone says it. Okay. So we can go. Is Hotel California on there? The Hotel California is not on there. <laughs> it would have been funny if it was, though. Um, Ariel, you good to be able to know? You got it all set up? Let me. So we're going to play just a uh, an example of what it's going to be like, and it's also going to help me set up like the volume of the song. So if you want to go ahead and play the, the sample, Ariel, you can. You know it, Trevor? <laughs> really? If you listen to it a little bit longer, you think you could? Really? Okay. Right, you, can stop it. you know what it is, Dave? Tom Petty, Free Fallen. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I figured that one would be like a pretty easy one to like start it off so you can kind of just see how it's going to be. I love Tom Petty. And I'm going to, I'm also going to keep track oh. of. <laughs> Who's better? It's gonna be like zero. To the ten. dad or the son? <laughs> Trevor and Dave. Okay, so you guys ready for your first one? Yeah. All right, Eric, you can play the first one now. Okay, hold on. Will you pause it real quick? This is a uh, a hint. It is. I looked up. This is. Um, what was it? Was it uh, not billboards? I think it was like it's like the number one country song of all times. Like I looked up like the top country songs yeah. of all times, and this was the number one. So all right, you can play it again, Ariel. started what is johnny cash it is a johnny cash song replay the song from the get-go because i agree at the beginning is easier to understand like fire it is ring of fire uh, is that what you had yeah okay good job buddy good it was job. The, as it went on i was doubting myself i was like oh yeah i, I agree two chords i was like oh ring of fire i was like no maybe not once you guys think you know it just say hey okay. i got it I think. Uh, yeah okay i missed a, uh, I'm, I'm not good at following instructions maybe well i didn't have very good instructions either i'm improvising <laughs> Okay, um, all right, ready for the next one, Aaron? Yeah. Okay, let's play it. <laughs> you got it there. This would be a, um, this would be one that Mike Reefer would like to listen to. He'd drink some beer to it. You got it. Probably George Strait. No, it's not. No. No. I got it. Think you know it, Dave? Uh, Roger Miller. Yep. Um, I'm stumped on. on I can get the words trailer for sailor rent. Yep. But I can't get the title. Uh, King of the Road. Oh, there it is. King of the Road. King of the Road. Give him half a point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to give it to him. We're being generous. Okay. Uh all right, third one. This one might be and well, I thought it would be <laughs> I thought you guys were going to get these. I thought you would get that one for sure. I figured you would get it as well. But um it was, all in, right. it was in one of my songbooks from Mr. Lee. <laughs> oh, really? It, I love that song. I love that song. Good beer drinking song yeah. for sure. Um, next one, Aaron. You know it? Yeah. You know it? Okay. What do you guys think it is? Ice Ice Baby. But, but there's another song that's like one note different from that. I want to make, I want to plead my case if I'm wrong. <laughs> okay. It's a David Boy Under Pressure. Yes. 
<laughs> Look it up. They're like one note different. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. So would you have guessed Under Pressure? No. So, no okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just know there's another song that's like right there with it. But you didn't know it was Under Pressure? No. Don't you guys sing Under Pressure? Listen. <laughs> don't you guys? I don't know. I thought you guys did. I don't think we do. If well, we did, it was with Sheridan. Well, you should. <laughs> yeah, you should. With Sheridan. That, yeah, it might have been with Sheridan. Yeah. This is not my genre of music. Okay, well, it's gonna. It is gonna get a little bit easier. I don't know for you. if it'll. It is. It is. I promise. You're gonna get. I don't think you're gonna get the next one. Um, and this is actually one that. So I'm, these are like just random acoustic versions I found online mm-hmm. of random people playing them. Yeah. Um, this gentleman actually did like a finger picking version. Ah. Mm-hmm. So, and from what I understand, it's like they have. It's like actual, like basically picks on your oh, yeah, fingers, like, and it's mm-hmm. like they're strumming up and down. With their fingers, right? Yeah. Can you do that? Yeah. That has to be just like another. It's another hand. You got to get coordinated. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's one thing just to strum, but also now you're moving the both yeah. fingers. Yeah. Both hands with all your fingers. Crazy. So that's this gentleman did this song with the finger picking version. Um, you want to play it, Ariel? As it got further along, I reckon, damn, 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 but I can't name it. It's Rush by Tom, so- or it's Tom Sawyer by Rush. Oh, oh. yeah. Dan's going to be so mad at me. <laughs> That's, and it's such a good song, too. But that, I will say, that one was a tougher one. Finger picking's like, it has a very different sound to it. Sure, sure. It was hard for me to find. Stumped me. It was hard for me to find a good acoustic version. Yeah. Especially acoustic instrumental, because a lot of people play acoustic versions, uh, but they're singing along. Right, with it, you know? yeah. So it's hard to find. Yep. I went through quite a few different songs trying to find like ones that I liked and I tried to listen to them and see if it like I could can you hear I the could, song and I hear yeah. it too mm-hmm. so that one was a tougher one but I want just to try it because I am a big uh, fan of Rush um, okay I think you're gonna get this next one. a lot of faith in me. I have I have faith in you <laughs> Dave I'm gonna be interested to see if you get this song yep. he knows a lot more than he thinks because he teaches so many songs kids are like I want to learn this song yeah I think this I'm, was a I'm popular bad with titles so this was a popular song in like the early 2000s, I think, is when it came out. So, Ariel, you want to play it? That is, is the title? Oh. Yeah, it is the title. Okay. I'll give it to you, Bull. I think you guys had it. <laughs> Try and keep track here, too. You'll be surprised. Um, oh, well, th- I'm, in- I'm just interested to see if... I know, I know you know the band, for sure. I'm interested to know if you like the band. Like, if it was, like, someone that you used to listen to. the band is. And well, <laughs> give it away. And then, Dave, I'm also interested to see if you know the band and have ever listened to any of their music. So, you want to play it? Yep. <laughs> You forfeit, you want to listen to it a little bit more. 
I don't think I'm going to get that. No. Chop suey? Yep. Is that how you say it? Or is it chop suey or what? Chop suey. Okay. Yep. By system of a down. Yeah, because the tom's going dum to dum to dum to doodle doodle doom to doom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know it. Did I tab that out for you? No. Because that title sounds familiar. You know any system of a down song? I just know who they are. Just Okay. I mean, I couldn't pick them out of a lineup, but okay. I know the name. Okay. Never listened to any of their music, really, though? It was... Uh, Unless those guys play it. <laughs> no, you guys don't play any. Why don't you guys play? You guys just not a fan? I don't know. They like punk. Yeah. Is it System of a Down not punk? No. What what wonder what would be considered then? It's like heavy rock. Heavy rock? Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. BYOB by them was like one of my first yeah. songs I used to. A lot to of those are like good gym songs. That's where you know just gym playlist. Mm-hmm. I was listening to them like sixth grade. <laughs> what I should have been probably, but it was like it was what made me like really start falling in love with like some harder rock songs. Yeah, I was like, listening to like Avenge Sevenfold and Bullet in se- sixth, seventh grade. Yeah, I, I mean, I was too. Yeah, Backcountry. Uh, these, these, yeah, oh, that whole album. <clears throat> yeah, and it was just, but yeah, it was like when I was just really starting to fall in love with rock yeah. music for sure. It was like when I really started to get pulled to it because I, I listened to classic rock, but I was never like like passionate about cla- classic rock. Like no, everybody, before. every generation has to have their songs yeah yeah Yeah, totally agree yeah totally agree um okay so trevor got that one he's catching up dave yeah thank god (laughs) um this one is actually i'm interested to see if you guys know it um i will say it's a pop song to get like try to help you guys out a little bit okay and it is it's supposed to be um supposed to be like a top like I, I just looked up like top songs of all time. Mm. And it was like in like high up in the list of top songs yeah. of all time. I don't remember what the website was that said it was up there, but um, and I'm actually going to listen to the concert like next weekend or something okay. like that. So not not it wasn't my choice, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean, what, I want to buy the tickets, but Ariel's a fan, so we're going to watch. Um, you can play it. I was thinking out loud, Ed, mm. Ed Sheeran. Ed, so I did the math one time on how many hours of Shape of You has been streamed by Ed Sheeran. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I wish I remember, it's like thousands of years worth of time. Yeah, <laughs> really? like I think it's the most streamed Spotify song. And I don't think I've ever clicked on it. I got in a big debate on like Ed Sheeran versus Taylor Swift <laughs> uh-huh. going down in music history. Mm-hmm. Um, I've, I'm on Ed Sheeran's so I think he's going be a really? name in history. Yeah, everyone was against me on that. So then I went into like a real... If it was Taylor, if you had made me choose between Taylor Swift and Ed Sheeran, I think I'd I think it's Taylor just because of right now and her ticket prices. I agree. Like overall success, she doesn't even come close to Ed Sheeran. Really? Like, people might come at me. Becca's going to come at me. That's <laughs> what I got in a fight with. And yeah. then I brought Casey. <laughs> I brought Casey into it and he goes, oh, Taylor Swift. I was like, well, you guys are wrong, but that's okay. Yeah, but she caused an earthquake. She yeah. did. Yeah. She's been popular for a long time too. Yeah. Very long time. Yep. He's how many how many Taylor Swift songs do you think you've taught? I had a kid. We did an entire book of Taylor Swift songs, a, a full album. Holy cow! Yeah, and we might have done a second book. I can't remember, but I know we did one at least. Dang. Yeah, I I used to like her song her songs, but I just can't anymore. She can't get into them. Either can I. Yeah, they're catchy. Sure. <laughs> sure. Good for just like going out to the grocery store. They were good for the background. They were good for like early guitar learners because you just move the capo and it's like yeah. the same five chords. Oh really? Yeah. Four chords change capo. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. All right, this one right here. Um this is an older song. Okay. Yay. But <laughs> it's it is another finger picking version. I don't know if either one of you guys are gonna get okay. it. Okay. I it's a popular song. Um I don't know. We'll see. We'll try. You know what, right? Oh, he's getting fancy with it. 
I want to hear a little more, but it sounded like something I was going to say. That's not what I was thinking. Give it a little longer. Dave, nothing. That melody sounds very familiar, but I'm not hearing any lyrics in my head. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's where I've been working off of. Is like you try to just play the beat and melodies. get some music yeah. or some lyrics going. Yeah, like I can get the vocal melody in my head, and this one, there's nothing there. If I told you the, would you guys rather know the artist or the name of the song and try to the artist? I'll give you the artist and see if you guys can figure it out from there. Okay, it's Prince. Oh, I'm not gonna uh, know it. You think you would know it, Dave? If we replayed it, the beginning is like the most distinguishable part for me. I'm not that familiar with his stuff. I know who he is, was. I've played Purple Rain in a band before, but that doesn't sound like Purple Rain. Uh -uh. I should have done Purple Rain. That'd be a good one. <laughs> it, uh, you want to try it again or just you want to know? I don't, I don't, I'm not familiar enough so, with his stuff. It's When Doves Cry. Oh. Yeah. It was, it was between Purple Rain and that When was Doves Cry. That was a huge hit. I should have done Purple Rain, though. Well, should have done Purple it wouldn't have helped me any. No? No. Not a Prince fan at all? No. Dang. Okay, okay. This one right here, I will be damn surprised if you know it, Dave. Mm. But it is a it's a rap song. I'm gonna give you guys that it's a rap song. But I'd be surprised if I know it. I I bet before I even before I even play the song, you guys want to just take a random guess at it's a very popular rap song. You want to just take a random guess? No. No. All right, give it give it a try, Ariel. We'll see. These last two I think were fun. <laughs> I tried to pronounce it. Again, I couldn't tell you the name. Oh, the actual song, but yeah. you can tell me the artist, right? Yeah. That's fine. Okay, that's good. Slow Shady. Yeah. yeah. Eminem. It's Eminem. It's Lose Yourself by Eminem. Okay. Did you ever watch 8 Mile? Mm -mm. His movie, movie goes hard. Huh? The movie goes hard. It's a it's a pretty good movie. I think it's a pretty good movie. I like it. I didn't I these last two I want to before I give you guys all my secrets away here. I want to kind of <laughs> um just see. Just see if you I guys just, can I get never it. got into rap. So or hip hop or pop or this last one is definitely gonna be a tough one. Okay. Um it's a they've all been tough, so it's uh you guys I started out strong and then faded. <laughs> yeah, overall, you guys almost got them all, actually. Well, oh. yeah. Yeah, we'll see what you get on okay. this last one. All right, you ready, Ariel? It's a new artist. Post Malone. Oh. Cir it's Circles by Post Malone. Uh, I haven't even heard you know of them. You know what I know about <laughs> <laughs> that, I, know I knew that was going to be a tough one. I knew that was I know about Post one. Malone is that he lives on a ranch in Utah. Yeah, he does. Not, and he has two eye tattoos. <laughs> yeah. That's the extent of it. <laughs> I knew that was going to be a tough one. That was one I actually uh, found like when I was kind of like looking up yeah. some stuff at the very beginning. It popped up. Mm, yeah. Um, but I knew it like. Post Malone's like really popular right now. Okay. Um, it was a really popular song by him. I'll hear something now. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah On the yeah. way home, you guys will yep. probably somehow hear it. Yep. Well, you guys got eight. Overall, you guys of, got eight. Out of how many? Out of ten. Oh, okay. So that's, yeah, that's not, not bad. bad. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. It's 80%. Um, you guys got Johnny Cash, King of the Road, Under Pressure, um, Green Day, Chop Suey, Ed Sheeran, right? You guys yeah. got there, Sharon? Yeah. We got didn't the get Miss Prince. <clears throat> so there's three of them you guys didn't get. Okay. So you're just in the wrong genres. <laughs> well, I wanted to, I didn't want to give them because I, I was worried that if I gave you all 
<clears throat> like classic rock, you would get an all. That would have been the wrong genre for me, anyways. <clears throat> yeah, you would have been. What would you have been better at? Like two thousands rock, no, like pop rock, um, or maybe like alternative rock. Two thousands alternative rock, just yeah. from like gym music. Sure. Um, but like for what I listen to, it's more modern day bluesy rock. That's not really big. So like, oh really? Yeah. So like Lark, just, like they they'll play festivals, but they're not selling out amphitheaters. It's, it's back to that jam in the van stuff. Yeah, like yeah. Lark and Poe. Yeah, why do you like why why that music over? I think just growing up with him playing blues and southern rock, it gravitated me towards it. And is it? But then, like Casey was a huge rock influence. I think the two worlds like merged. Like when you guys listen to music, are you guys listening to? Is it like a big part of it? You guys are listening to the actual instrumental. Is that a big part of it for you guys? Like you guys listen to the guitars. I listen to a lot of music that I don't have to think too deep on. So like a lot of country for just casual listening. Mm -hmm. But if I want to like sit down and go through an album, it's going to be more rock with blues influence behind it. And and what is it though about the music that you like? Like, is it the instrumental that you are really pulled to because of your love for music? Like, a, a, like your love for I think it depends on the instruments? artist. The artist, um, because there's going to be certain bands where I'm pulled to like their drummer and other bands where their lyric writing or their vocal melodies, or their solos. So a little bit of everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Dave, are you the same? or? I definitely listen to the guitar. And, uh, but like when you're listening to a song, that's your main well, part you, know, you enjoy it's, of it? It's funny. It depends on why I'm listening or where my what my mind is doing at the time. Uh, a buddy of mine, just the other day, we were talking about falling asleep to music. And he's going, I can't do that. He said, I'll sit there and I'll figure out every chord change that they're doing in that song. You will? No, Casey. Casey oh, and I Casey. talk about this. Casey can't casually listen to music. And that's why he's oh. like, he strongly dislikes a lot of uh, modern country is because of the simplicity and like, you know, they're repeating themes in their lyric writing. So Casey okay. doesn't like that. And I can shut off and just listen. Mm -hmm. Like I don't have to dive into a song. Sure. I think I do listen I listen to the chord changes. I listen to the guitar tone, but uh, I do listen to the lyrics. And there are certain songs with just incredible lyrics, but I don't think I listen to them first. I think I listen to the instrumentation first. Really? Yeah, and then I catch on to the lyrics eventually. Mm -hmm. um, I'm the opposite. I would I would the agree. I would say me. I'm the opposite. Yeah. The lyrics will catch me, or usually their voice. The voice is a big one for me. Um, oh, really? Then I'll dive in deeper to their songs. So it's not even so much the lyrics. It's like a mix. of If the lyrics are ridiculous, I'm not going to listen to them. Agreed. Um, but Agreed. yeah, the voice is a big one. I mean, I, I do and enjoy the, music. I'd say the feeling behind it is really big, too. Mm -hmm. um, there's an artist out there right now with a great voice that my girlfriend likes. And I told her, I said, he feels fake. Mm -hmm. I was like, I just don't like listening to him. It feels like he's like, there's no real... Trouble. That's how I feel about Luke yeah. Combs. Yeah, there's no like real trouble behind the songs he's writing. Mm -hmm. And I won't name his name just because a lot of people like him, but I don't. I need a break. Okay. Piss break or just stretch? Pee break. Pee break? We can take a pee break. Perfect. Ariel, how long have we been in it? About an hour and 45 minutes. Seriously? Oh gosh. Do you want to just, oh. you want to kind of just wrap it up here? We could. We could just wrap it up here. Dave, I. You know, I, I know you got to pee. I got to kind of pee too, but um, if I'm we, older we, than you, I got to pee worse. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. I've all floating already. Most of the time, by the end of the podcast, that's why I had to end it. A lot of times is because I'm like, hey, we gotta we gotta go to the bathroom, and it's like uh, an hour and forty five minutes. It felt like five minutes. It goes by very quick. Yeah. Um, I Dave, I really appreciate you coming on. This is sharing been a your story. Blast, man, a total blast. I, I enjoy it too. I I love music. And music's been so beneficial for me in my life. I know nothing, like when it comes to like scientifically knowing anything about music, I know nothing mm -hmm. about it. Um, but I, I love, I love that you came and shared your story. Uh, I think other people are gonna to do really it. enjoy it as well. Glad to do it. Um, I'm glad. Um, thank you for just giving me your time today. Absolutely. It is a Sunday. You know, a lot of people like to take their Sundays off, so I really appreciate that as well. Great way to spend a Sunday. Yeah, I think so. I, I had a lot of fun. I enjoy the game. I got Trevor, my boy here with me. Yeah, Trevor, thank you so much for getting your dad out here. I appreciate it. Yeah, I feel like he's a name a lot of people know that you wouldn't know they know. You know, he's taught everyone I went to school with, their parents had him in art. 
worked with Kenny Jett and everyone that I told my name to, they, oh, your dad's Dave. Yeah. <laughs> he was my art teacher or, oh, he, uh, he taught my kid guitar. So yeah, hopefully a lot of people see it and they're like, oh my gosh, Mr. T. Yeah. I hope so too. And if you guys are listening, you guys want to maybe have him back on. Maybe I can sweet talk him coming back on. He's got a lot of stories. Let me know. Yeah. Let me know maybe what you guys would want me to ask him or maybe something that we kind of just skimmed over that people want to know sure. about a little bit more or sure maybe play another game something like that whatever you guys want let me know uh, make sure to leave a like and a subscribe share it with your friends help me grow we're damn close we're six away from 500 so help me get to 500 subscribers nice. um and thank nice. you guys again uh, i'm gonna have you guys sign my my banner but Great. you can take a piss break real quick yeah um and thank you guys good deal see you peace thank you